Okay, right. Um, yeah, so we're just um, about ready to kind of go here. So, um, yeah. First off, just going to do. I'm um, just going to show you what the, the default layout is here. This is the kind of thing you'd get if you uh, model the character from scratch. So I've, I've made this up, but this is the kind of thing that you get. Some pretty useless UVs, um, you know, outside the area and various problems here. So uh, I'm just going to fix those, and we can do that just by just to start off with. What we we'll do is just um, change the um, some settings in here. So going to the image menu and turn on show UVs. So here we can see if the UVs are tangled or not. Uh, and you can see that what this shows you is that they'll be blue or red, depending on which direction the UVs faces are pointing, what's known as the winding order. In this case here, this is an anti-clockwise winding order because it's blue. If it's clockwise, it's red. It makes no difference. Really, all the changes is the direction the bump map is going to point in. But other than that, it's basically the same. What we're looking for here are areas where there's things, there's two polygons pointing in the same or different directions, and you can see those here. If they're pointing in the same direction, you get blue. Things will go bluer. If they're pointing in different directions, they'll go kind of purple, red, this kind of thing. So you can tell inst instinctively here. We can just eyeball this and tell these polygons, this one here, and these these two, three polygons here, are overlapping. I mean. You know, if I was to move these out of the way, oops, got soft section turned on, just turn it off, so that you can see that's untangled that. And, and this is the kind of thing that we're doing here, is just untangling UVs a little bit to um, to kind of make sure they're they're not um, overlapping with this. Okay, so that's that. Um, just one other thing to mention inside in, in here before we carry on um, and um, uh, and apply apply a projection, and that's that the. the um, a setting we just want to use here, so um, we're just going to change this setting here. So we're just going to go to the display menu and go to display and polygons. And you can see we've got border edges here, but the one we want is texture border edges. So texture border edges just shows you wherever there's a edge to the uh, UVs. So you can see the edge of the UVs around here, and here's the corresponding edge there. So we're going to start off for this particular case. Here, we're going to start off with a planar projection from above. Um, we could use several different projections. Um, one of the projections which would work is a cylindrical projection for the body. So we could use one cylindrical projection by default. I think I'm just going to use a, a, a planar one just because there's a few reasons really. The considerations here will be the fact that the hands, the feet, are pretty flat. So using a, a planar projection from above is a, is a good starting point because we're going to split those in two. Uh, another consideration is the fact that the legs pointing that direction as well. So I mean, we can do several projections, and this is the alternate method of doing this whole process: is to select polygons and just project them individually. But obviously, it, it's worthwhile to kind of discuss in this. The, the real crux here is the fact that what we've got is we've got a model which is topologically a cylinder. So you can see here the whole way along, this is basically a cylinder. This is why we want, you know, we want our model to be have nice kind of edge leaps from the way along here. You can see that the edge leaps run the whole way along, and also we've got some extrusions. This is an extruded face here, so you can see that our five-sided um, join here. So this is basically um, you know, nice and neat, and you know that means we can select uh, the um, cylinder, which the body and the tail are made up of, and the arms separately. They can be handled separately. So the reason why, you know, even though this is a cylinder, you know, this body, this section here, the body section, that's a nice cylinder. That's easy enough to select. We could set the faces relating to the body. We could do a cylindrical projection, and we can go home and you know put a feet up because that's basically that done. But the cylindrical projection for the arms would be rather difficult because it changes direction. So I mean, this would be easy enough if it's a, a, a you know a character, a, a human character in a T pose. But with a character like this, it, we've got a problem here. So um, this is, this is part of the solution. Really, this whole posing process kind of shows you it work from any different direction. It doesn't matter about the shape of the model at all. So um, just going to jump into the process of doing this and just to illustrate it this way. So we're just going to do a uh, initial projection here. So we're going to go to create UVs and planar mapping with the options box, and we're going to change it to, to bounding box so it reproduces around a. Um, just reset this thing so you can see the default. Oops, defaults are oh, the default settings are bounding box anyway. So uh, bounding box Y, and that's it. Just going to project. So we've now got the UVs projected as from above, as you can see here. So we can forget about this now, we're going to come back to that later on, but we'll um, just work in the view here now. So just going to, just going to do some um, default projections. Obviously, one thing to consider is that we could 
for it would be much much easier. I'm going to do this in, in both sides here, but really the best thing to do is to um, select the model and to mirror it, and mirror the UVs as well. Um, you know, because then you can always join them back together again very very easily. But it just means you you, you only do half the work. Um, you know, we don't have to worry about the other side. Just make the UVs on one side, and it will get mirrored across the other. So first thing I'm going to do is just to um, again this whole process is called pulsing for a reason. And the idea is to try and if you imagine if we wanted to pull this skin off, if we wanted to be able to create the separate sections that it's made it's made up of, um, we'd um, essentially just have the body here as one piece, have the arms as one piece, the hands and so on, and the head separately. So we're going to make some incisions around the most logical places to be. And you can see here this is one of those joins, this is where the extrusion has happened. And so we've got these vertices here, these vertices with one, two, three, four, five faces, and again five faces there. So these are the five, let's uh, say the four corners of the um, of, of the extrusion. So I'm just going to um, first off just go to um, edge selection here, so pressing F10, and I'm just going to do this in little, little sections here. If I double click on there, um, it's necessary wherever I double click. You know, if you double click on a run where there's a um, this is why we like this is why we like um, four sided and why, why we like quads is because when you have a group of quads you can double click there and it will select the entire edge loop with edge, edge on. When you have when it comes to a join here, if it can't you know we can always when you have a, a, a group of quads it's kind of window sh frame shape, you, you can the selection will it's self symmetrical, it's self similar. So but when you get to this section here it isn't because we've got a vertex here with five side, five faces rather than four. So the selection can't continue, you know, because wh where would it continue? Would it go down this branch or would it go down that branch? So it just slops, stops there. So this is the thing, this is why we, we like to use um, quads and, um, and, and four of them connected together because it makes the edge loop um, selection much, much easier. Whereas this is kind of non continuous. But this is not a problem, you know, for what we're about to do. But it does mean that we can basically do this in sections. So I'm going to effectively cut this in UV space. What we'll see is basically the UVs, which are joined at the moment. If we pull this space around, it will pull the others around. If we cut this in UV space, we'll be able to pull the UVs away. We'll have to detach them. So that's the whole process here, to try and detach this and to unskin it, as, if, as it were, in UV space. So with that edge loop selected, I'm just going to go to Edit UVs and Cut UV Edges. That's that done. I'm just what I'm going to do is I've left this the channels box visible, visible so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, once you've done this once, you can repeat the last use command by pressing G. You know, G repeats whatever command you've done. So if I do this and then just double click on here and press G, you can see the second map cut as it's called. It's basically the um, um, yeah the, the, the polygon um, UV cut and um, cut edges happening again here. So I'm going to double click on that edge. I'm just going to run round. So you know. If you if you can hear the keyboard being pressed, or this is changing, I'm just pressing G. So I've done that. I'm now going to go and um, the remainder of the, the hand here. So uh, I'm going to cut. We can see here, just to um, just to bear this in mind here. Now this looks like this kind of strange kind of bow tie arrangement here. Looks like it's um, something complicated because the edges continue direction here. It's not really. If you look at it, you can see that actually these are just quads. There's nothing special about them, it's just that vertex has been moved, moved that way. So if I double click on there, and then double click, hold down shift, double click on there, you can see I've just selected one edge loop. It's an edge loop which is kind of broken because it's basically been, it's been split off here because it's interesting tessellation pattern I've created here, but otherwise it's just the end of a, of a length of a, of a cylinder. You can see here these are just normal quads. So what we have in between that, the, this edge loop here, and those edge loops there is a cylinder, and we like cylinders. Cylinders make for easy texturing, so we're just going to do that and press G just to cut those edges there. So I've now cut that there and cut that there. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is to, be able to you know, at the moment now we can move just to kind of illustrate this. I, I can now now I've cut those. Um, this is the arm here, isn't it? So this arm here, if I go to the uh, Move UV Shell tool and click on that. You can see this. This, this is the movie shell tool. It just, it just kind of selects the extent of the, of the thing you clicked on. So, because I've made these incisions there and there, I can now move the hand away. So I'll go to the move tool and just move that away. Go back to the uh, movie view shell tool and move that like that. So I'm just going to move the body out of the way for the time being. Just move that to the side and then move this into the centre here. We'll deal with the hand later, but you know, just kind of just illustrate this. 
So that's got the arm now. So let's